Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a little video to go through Helen Elliston's very first book, Colorist Special Effects. Now I actually like quite a lot of the things from this first book, even though I've got all of her books and I sort of turn back to it. Now what she's done in this book is it starts quite basic, which I think is really useful. So right at the beginning it talks about shading and how to do different types of techniques when you're colouring, so zigzags or coils or feathering or scumbling. So and you can practice these different techniques to have a, to work out how to shade things. And I think that's really great for beginners. A lot of people just jump right in and don't think about where you're going to start. And this one talks about how to blend one colour into another when you're blending. This is really useful when we've got sort of red into orange or different, or even sort of four different colours to blend together. And then we move on to how to do three dimensions by using different pressure on the pencil, where to put the highlights and the shadows and things like that. So you get some ideas of what sort of things to do when you're, when you're colouring different shapes. And here we start with eyes. Now, Eyes I always find are quite difficult, but I know a lot of people really love to do them. And so you've got a step-by-step sort of -step guide on how to do the eye, and then you've got a little bit on how to do a tear as well on the cheek, and I and um, how to make them glisten as well. And they look really great, so those are quite fun to do. And here we've got lips, so it teaches you how to layer up different um, the different colours so that you get the shiny part and the darker parts and there's a little place for you to have a go. And here we have glasses which is really interesting so you can try different techniques to make the lenses shine or reflect things. And here we have some skin tone so different parts um, steps to adding different colours on and then um, forming the sort of final skin tone after once you get to here. Now what's interesting in this book is it's not a specific brand of pencil so it says things like use an earthy green or a yellow green or a or a sort of pale flesh or a dark grey so you can use any set of pencils and just um, work out what to use what I would recommend is look through all the instructions first pick out all the pencils you're going to use even perhaps write them down in the instructions so that you don't get muddled as you go through and you can practice them here and then hair. Hair can be quite tricky to get the shine and the shadow and this shows you exactly how to do it. And then we have a blue hair which is really interesting. Obviously you could use these instructions and just do any colour you like. It shows a, a, a different colour here so you can just, just adapt it and then you can have a practice here. And then we have um, nature type things. We've got some running and water drops. I've used this one not for a running water drop but more for a for a shape like this and it was very effective. I was really pleased with it. And here we have bubbles. Bubbles is something that lots of people like to know how to do and these are different to the bubbles in some of her other books so uh, they're great fun. And we have a shimmery butterfly. I've tried this one too. He looks fantastic when you finish with him. And this red rose. I haven't tried this one out. It looks quite fun. And a flower shows you how to do the middle of a flower as a gemstone or um, just as a, a, as a more realistic looking flower centre. I've actually tried this one with the gemstone. And then we have clouds. I've had a go at these clouds and actually I was really surprised at how well they came out considering how badly I think I draw clouds. So it was quite fun. And here we have a glossy mushroom. I've had a go at this one as well. He's quite fun. What have we got here? A soap bubble. So how to put a sort of shiny bubble over the top of what you're doing or a floating soap bubble. And this one is mermaid scales and I've had a good I've had a go at these and they're great fun. Um, it's just quite a lot of different colours all mixed together and you get a lovely effect. And fur. Now fur is something that people find tricky so it's great to have a page on fur to have a go at and some translucent fairy wings. It's a really good idea. You could use this maybe for dragonflies as well or things or bees or anything just to use the technique to sort of have them looking really sparkly but see-through and you can practice on this page here. And then we have three-dimensional bows. These are particularly great for Christmas books and things like that so you can have a go at working out exactly where to put the light and shade to get it looking really good. And we have a wine glass, so we start to learn how to do glass, which is quite usually very tricky. So this is a great one to do. 
and balloons. I've used this one. I don't think I was doing a balloon. I just wanted something to look like a balloon. And it's really effective with this sort of light area here. And then we've got a dress. So how to do this little dress. And you've got a picture that brings together all the things that you can practice on. Now this crown I have done and I've used this technique for lots of different sort of metallic things and it's really, really good. I highly recommend this one. It's fantastic. You get great, great looking results. And now a glowing candle. I've tried this one too and this was fun and it, I was impressed with that. And we've got a practice area. A glowing lantern. I haven't tried this one. I think I used the candle um, one rather than the sort of lantern one, but I should have a go at that because it looks great. And chrome. Now, so you've got shiny chrome. I've used um, I've used this for something. I can't remember what, but it looked really great. I particularly like this flower. It's fantastic. And these glass lit teardrops. I use these a lot when I'm doing things like fish scales or. Um, something that I just want to look gem like I use this technique it's really works really well everything looks really shiny and really good but here we go on to the proper gems and I've used these a lot as well and they are very impressive so you get a lovely gem which is shining with little lines through it looks fantastic I've done this one and this one and I'd use this one a lot the red one and I've even tried this. Now these glinting crystals, they're fantastic. You've got different shades of colour and different things. I really like those. I've used those a few times. And then there's the red ruby. Not sure if I've done that one, but I've done this, um, this one where I had a black, um, I did a black gemstone and it looked really effective. And here we have a sort of a bug done as a sort of gem. I haven't done it on a bug, but I've done it on a fish. And I really liked having sort of gem, glassy gem fish. And there's another one here in different colour. And here's the fish. So I use this one for the fish. And this is a silvery pearl. Looks really lovely. I haven't tried it, but it looks fantastic. And here you've got an amber gem. So you've got a slightly different colour one and a black. I've had a go at this black one as well and done this sort of bit around the edge too and I was really pleased with how that came out. And the galactic looking gem, I haven't tried this one but it does look good. And we've got some practice gem pages and here we've got some backgrounds and embellishments. So this one talks is how to do snowfall so that could be really useful for your Christmas books. And here's a stained glass window effect, which is really interesting. I haven't tried it, but I think it's a really interesting technique to make something look really different. And this shows you how to make things look less flat. So although it uses the example of this planet, you can use the techniques to for anything, really. And here we've got a sunset background, which is really pretty. So you could follow that through. It's quite, she shows it within a square thing, but a lot of, um, a lot of, Colouring books have circular designs, um, rather like this one that I'm doing here, so it could go in the middle of there. And then we have how to create water backgrounds, or sort of a different pastel effects in the background. And here's a sort of more, another water technique. And here is a sort of starry background, so that's great. And a sort of bright galactic star in the background, so that could be quite impressive. Again, maybe Christmassy, not sure, depends what you're colouring. And here's how to do this sort of fairy dust trail, which would be great not just for sort of fairy books, there are quite a lot out there, but also maybe for insects or things like that. And this teaches you how to do wood grain using a really interesting technique. And this one teaches you how to do like paint drips coming out from the bottom of your picture, which I think is quite fun. And this one teaches you how to do rubbing so you get different effects behind what you're doing. And then how to create a shadow underneath what you're, um, you're doing. And moon and stars background. And how to do a marker pen background using some hand sanitizer. We've all got quite a lot of that around at the moment so we might want to have a go at that one. And fireworks. Now you might think they're easy but uh, and actually when you look through the um, through the instructions they're not too bad but I think you want to follow it to get it right because these look quite 3D. And now you've got some practice pages. There's also a, um, a colour wheel here to give you some help with um, blending and this is so that you can test some different colours on these particular pictures. 
and you've got some signature cards. So what these are is you put your name here, you colour in this thing and then when you take a photograph of your artwork and you put it onto social media you can put the card on it so that people don't um, try and steal it or copy it. And then there's a colour chart so you can swatch your pencils in the back and uh, have a look at all the colours. There's lots of pages for those because a lot of us have lots and lots of pencils. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has multiple sets of different pencils. And I think that goes all the way through to the end. So there you go. Hopefully you found that interesting and you might want to uh, get hold of this book. As usual, I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can go and have a look at it for yourself. Thank you. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be um, looking through Colorist Special Effects 2 by Helen Elliston and uh, telling you what to expect if you want to buy the book. Now, she has all sorts of colouring tutorials in here. Most of them use um, poly um, Prismacolor pencils, but I use polychromos and I just um, just transfer the colours, um, choose slightly different colours and have a go and I find it works really well so I don't think it really matters what pencil set you have. Now she starts off with this lovely looking apple and then we have cupcakes. This lovely one here look, so there are all the steps to do the cake and the icing and here you have the space where you can practice and then you can perhaps use it in some of your um, colouring. I've actually used this icing, I didn't do the whole cake for, for sort of marshmallow that I was colouring and it looked sort of multicoloured. It was great fun to do and it worked really well. And then you have an iced donut which you can have a go at. And here are some grapes, now there are two parts to this grapes, it's quite a long tutorial but it looked it looks really good and I've done this one, um, I had a go at it and I was really pleased with the results, it looked great and I'm really impressed with this ice cream one as well, I haven't tried it but it looks fantastic if you look how real it looks at the end. And then we have a macaron or macaroon, which again I haven't tried this one but I've tried this pumpkin, this was great fun, it looks really effective with all the shadow and the light and things like that on it. And here's a lovely strawberry, I've also had a go at this one. And that was great fun. Now we have we move on to some sweets. We have a foiled wrap sweet here, and another one which is a slightly different um, colour. And here's a practice page with all the different items on that you can have a go at. And now we have more natural things. These are more like the sorts of things that I have a go at. Now here's a sort of bokeh background. I know a lot of people want to have a go at this and uh, and find them quite tricky, but there's a this is a really nice, easy step by step guide to how to do it. So it could be a good one to try. And here we have a really pretty multicolored feather, um, which I've had a go at. That's that's um, looks really nice and a peacock feather. I've recently done a peacock actually but I didn't use this tutorial. I'd forgotten that it was even here but this looks really lovely. And here we have flames. Now I've had a go at this. Now the flames um, here look really real. Mine didn't quite come out so well as this. I think I need some more practice but I was really pleased. They were the best flames I'd ever done so it was a really, I was, I, it was really great. Now we have a hibiscus flower. I haven't tried this but I love the way it looks so dark inside makes it look really 3D. And this, this flower as well. I've had a go at this one. It looks really great when it's finished. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. And here we have a tree frog. I've had a go at the frog as well. He's really good fun. He looks really cute when he's done. And a clump of grass. I've used this for these um, techniques for trying out grass. I didn't use exactly this picture, but I had a go. And it looks really great to have the sort of lighter grass at the, at the top and the shadow at the bottom. It makes it look much more real. And here's a hummingbird. I have got a hummingbird picture I'm going to do soon, so I might have a go at, uh, at trying this one. It, my hummingbird doesn't look like this, but I can certainly use all the colours and techniques to have a go. And now we have a ladybird. I haven't used this one to uh, have a go at a ladybird, I have, um, or a ladybug as she calls it, but uh, it, looks, it looks lovely, so I must have a try at that sometime. And we have a jungle palm leaf and some glossy leaves. There's often a lot of leaves in colouring books, particularly Johanna Basford, so these are quite handy to do. And I've had a go at this silver leaf. This was great fun. I loved having a go at metallics. They're quite tricky, so it's really good to have a try at it. And here we have a multicoloured leaf. 
and here we have some gemstones now the gemstones are fantastic I've had a go at some of them um, the, this one I've had a go at looks really great You've got all the little shine on it and all the little sort of um, dents and things and scratches in it looks really fantastic there's another one here and then there are more here as well so you can sort of pick one that looks the colour that you'd like to do and do that tutorial although this one shows you you can try it in different colours so it's really great and another one red one and then this sort of um, sunstone now this shed I've had a go at this was great fun it looks like it's sort of it says it's iridescent it looks really pretty when it's finished it takes quite a lot of layers and different colors and you have to be careful that you don't muddy them together too much but I managed to do it and I thought I was really pleased with how it looked out at the end and here's another shell with a different colour to have a go at and uh, and so, sort of putting it all together with the background of sand and, and water and some bubbles and things like that so you can get a really lovely sort of beach scene and it carries on over the page so it teaches you how to do the different waves with white and things like that so that's really great and here we have more um, tutorial for bubbles. Now bubbles are something a lot of people like to know how to do so this is a great one to try and it's only four steps it's quite straightforward and here we have a snow. Now snow is really tricky it's always tempting just to leave it white and ignore it but actually um, Helen has got all sorts of stages with different greys and even blues in there to, and, and sort of white Posca pen to get, to get a lovely effect. And here we have, this is a really useful Prismacolor and Polychromos conversion chart. So if you're using um, Polychromos rather than the Prisma colours, you can work out what the closest colours are to the ones that you need. I find that quite useful. And I actually use an online version of that, but it's really handy. And here are some colour combo inspirations. It's really interesting colours that you might not have thought of putting together, but they work. So that can be really useful. Sometimes people look at a page and they don't know what to do with it. So maybe taking one of these and just having a go with that and limiting your colour palette and seeing what comes of it. Now we've got a practice page here and another one here. And here we move on to 3D shapes and objects. Now this is an anchor. I've had a go at this. It's very impressive if you get it right. Um, it took me a couple of attempts and then it looks really great. Really shiny, really 3D. And we have a cauldron here which looks really great i haven't had to go at this one and a crackle glass light ball it looks really interesting and a glass bottle now glass is so tricky i haven't had a go at this but i have got some glass bottles i need to do so i'm going to try it and the lighthouse i've had a go at the lighthouse i think i did a different color but it was really useful to work out where all the shading needed to go to make it look really rounded and really realistic and here we have, this is a really interesting, um, so you can put the lighthouse into a scene to teach you how to do rocks and then how to do the sky. And skies are hard, so this is great to have this tutorial to work out how to do it. And the rocks as well, very textured, look very 3D. Now here's a dome, this is, would be like on the top of a building, teaches you how to get it looking really 3D, so that's great. And there are more as well, different colours, slightly different styles. Here we have a marble. Marble looks very, looks very see-through. It's got the air bubbles in and things like that. So it's a really interesting one to have a go at. And a plant pot. There's quite a lot of plant pots in uh, colouring books. And this is particularly a terracotta one. But you could replace that with any colours once you know whether to go dark or light or whatever. And it's got a lovely shine on it. It looks really good. And here we have a faceted red heart gemstone. So it teaches you all the steps to go through to get this lovely effect at the end. I have tried this and it does look really lovely and I didn't find it too tricky. I found it first time and I found it pretty good. Now here's a skull and crossbones. This has got a lot of stages to making this very impressive looking skull and crossbones. It's not something that I'm um, keen on colouring to be honest. I know some people really like this sort of thing so I haven't actually tried this one. But you've got some places where you can try it, perhaps put a gem stone on there things like that now i have had to try this glossy unicorn horn it's great fun it looks really cool when you've done it i'm not sure if i used it for a unicorn or something some other sort of horn but it was really good fun and a 3d star i must have a go at this when i get my christmas book out it's got plenty of stars i shall have a go at one of these 
And we've got small practice pages here. And here we've got some metal and steampunk. It's quite difficult metallics and things like that. So it's a really good idea to have some of these in the book and to have a go at them. I haven't tried um, this particular clock, um, but I do like the look of it. I think it looks great. Um, now spoon, I've tried this spoon. There's quite a lot of stages to getting the spoon looking quite right. And, uh, and there it is at the end. Now I found it fairly tricky to do, but I was really impressed with how well I did. It didn't look exactly perfect like this one, but I, it looked quite real, and so I was really pleased. And I've had to go at this cog as well. I didn't, I can't remember what I used it for. It wasn't the, an exact cog, but I used this technique on something and I really liked how it came out. I was really, really pleased. And uh, I haven't tried this one. This is a really interesting sort of strange shimmery brass tone metal. Here we have a cog and a lock um, to have a go at. And a steampunk stopper and key. I haven't used these either, but uh, I think I've used some of the metallic ideas on other things. Same with this copper pipe. I've used the colours and, uh, and the shading idea for other things that I've coloured. And uh, here's a practice picture. Now here we have skin tone. I don't do a lot of pictures with skin tone, but I think it's really impressive how she just uses a few steps and gets a very good look on the skin. And she does different positions so that you know where to put all the shadow, which I think is really clever. And then you've got sort of, so you've got legs from the front and then from the side. And then you've got them from the back and from the other side sort of thing. And in different sort of to skinned colours, which is really handy. So you can sort of choose what sort of tones you want to use. And face here. And then we've got fabric, which is really difficult. So how to do this dress. And then we can practice here. And here's a different dress that you can have a go at and practice in the practice picture to go to have a go. And here's some dogs and cat noses to have a go at. It's quite fun. You can just copy them across. It doesn't have lots of instructions. It's just to have a go and see if you can copy that. And here we've got some more practice pages in the book. So I hope you enjoyed that one. And I hope there's something useful in there. That, and uh, and you might want to have a... Um, part buy it now there I'll put a link in the description so you know exactly where to buy it from thank you hi everyone I thought I'd just do a review of Helen Elliston's book colorist special effects 3 now I have done a review of her latest book which is number 4 but I thought if you liked that one you might like to see what she did in her previous book and have a little look at that now I've done quite a few um, of the uh, exercises in this book so I thought I would be able to tell you which ones I'd done and how well I got on with it so the first section in the book is about how to turn a circle into a fried egg <laughs> that's very very cool I think but it's not one that I've used I tend to use um, Johanna Bassler's colouring books and so it doesn't really have lots of sort of foodie things in there and here's the finished picture which is amazing and then she has one which is a realistic egg you can go through the different steps to get a very nice looking egg at the end including a shadow on the table and a 3D glassy triangle getting 3D is really tricky but in the end you can it might be tricky to see but you can see that there's a there's a 3d shape there and then she does one for stars with shadows behind and there are different colors you can use either your, your sort of pink or your yellow and it goes through the process of making one of those and then one with a glassy square and then we have another glassy shape of butterfly and a flower I haven't tried these but I have tried her um, glassy gemstones and they come out really nicely and there's a heart and if you notice and an oval so I've got a loose page in my book um, you notice that they're all different colors so if you wanted to swap the colors around you could use a different um, a different uh, tutorial and we've got the hexagon and here's one about how to turn your circle into a tennis ball it's very cool and a different one bubble gum 
which is actually lovely, it looks really shiny and pretty and you could even use it for something like say a balloon as well and here's a rainbow disc, so like a CD um, effect now here's a page where you can practice all the different ones that have been mentioned already now we move on to flowers. Now flowers is much more my forte and I've done some of these. This is the, a tulip. I've used this one and it came out really nicely. In um, World of Flowers there's a page with some tulips on. And I'm actually about to do another page with some tulips on. And here's an orchid. And I used this for an orchid as well in World of Flowers and it came out really nicely. We have some cherry blossom. I haven't done this one but I'll probably have a go. It looks really pretty looking through reminds me of what's here and what I need to have a go at and here's a crocus that looks really pretty too and the purple pansy I have had a go at this one I think it does look really nice and the fuchsia I've also done the fuchsia and the bleeding heart and I can say that they were really easy to follow the tutorials you do have to take your time a little bit because it's obviously something a bit new but going through each step makes it really simple and the and the results are really pretty and I haven't done the cactus, but I have got a cactus to do actually in uh, Secret Garden, so I might have a go at that. Here's the sunflower, I have done the sunflower, and I have got a video tutorial of the sunflower centre um, on this uh, channel. So I've, I'll link to that so you can have a look at it if you want to watch me actually have a go at it. And then we've got some bluebells. I've tried this one as well, it's really pretty. And you can practice on this page. And here we have a waterfall. Now I'm thinking, wow, magical jungle, there's a waterfall there. That would be a great one to try for that. And actually, she uses white paint on this and uses a toothbrush to apply it. But of course, you could use a paintbrush or you could always use your sort of paint pens, which is what I would do. And here's a starfish. And I'm pretty sure I've had a go at that one somewhere. And some coral. I know I've done this one, so probably in um, Lost Ocean, I probably had a go at these. Now here's a lily pad and a tree. I'm sure I've had a go at this tree trunk somewhere and uh, it's got a lot of sort of depth in it which is great fun to do. And here we have some silver birch tree trunks. I haven't tried these but they look really good. I must have a go. And you've got a four leaf clover. It's nice and sort of shiny. Looks great fun. Now here is some tree bark effect. This would be really good for a really big area of tree trunk and it looks really, really textured by the end. So that would be great fun to do. Here we have an elephant and to get the skin texture right. Again, Magical Jungle we've got a couple of elephants so that could be a great fun place to try that. And we have some bamboo. Now honeycomb, I've seen quite a lot of pictures lately with honeycomb on and uh, there are various tutorials around but this one looks quite fun and what I find interesting is that she tells you to sort of vary it at the bottom here to uh, make each, each hexagon look different and I think that's quite a original idea. And here we have a honey pot. I think there's a honey pot in Ivy and Inky Butterfly and some bees to do. There's plenty of bumblebees in Johanna Basford's books and uh, this one looks very cool. I must have a go. I have not tried this one. And then we have some splashy waves and again this one is uh, paint splodges where you could use a toothbrush. It looks like messy fun. Now I've done this one, 3D filigree with this sort of silver. I did this in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly where there was a page with just some swirly bits and it came out really well. I was very pleased with it. And uh, there's a pencil here. This could be handy. There is a page in World of Flowers with pencils in. So that could be a fun one to do. And a textured teddy bear. Now achieving fur is always quite tricky. So it's quite an interesting one to have a look at. Even if you're not doing a teddy bear. Just to learn how to do the fur. Here we have a croissant. Looks really tasty. And a slice of watermelon. That's quite unusual and fun. Now this is a planet. This is quite an interesting one where you have different colours and textures. You can see here in the final picture and, that, and you've got even this sort of backgroundy colour which is quite difficult to achieve. And then some glowing planets. And this is a magical fairy door. I have done this one as well. This is quite fun. I did it... I can't remember which door I used it for. There are a few in Johanna Basford's books and I used it, I adapted it a little bit but there were stones around it and wooden door and things like that and I had a great go at it and did some of the metallics. I remember the door was really small so fitting in the metallic bit was quite tricky but it was quite fun to have a try at. 
and then we have rope now there were I don't think I've tried the rope one but it looks quite fun now here we have a starburst background um, this is quite an interesting one where people are often looking for background ideas and something to uh, do this one would you would do behind a circle sort of design so that would be quite interesting one to try I haven't tried that one but I've tried this one the mountain background I think I tried it behind the fog perhaps in secret garden maybe is it in secret garden I don't know anyway but uh, I had a go at it I'm not very good at drawing so my initial markings weren't very brilliant so I wasn't that happy with my result but I liked the colors and the the effects that came out so I just need to uh, I probably should have traced this one and had I done that I'm sure I would have been pleased with the effect now I've had a go at this, this is a grassy meadow. Now this was great fun and very effective to bring out lots of patches of different grass. That was great, it took quite a long time to do, but I think now I've done it once, in fact I've done it two, twice now, two or three times actually, and it gets easier each time, you get more used to knowing what to do and what techniques to use. And I've also done this topiary effect, um, actually drawing my own bushes in the background, I actually did background just like this with the with the fox in front and uh, but my bushes were a bit more even than this and uh, and it was great fun to do and this one's interesting this is a sheet of music as a background it's really different and original and I think that could be quite a lot of fun but you have to use sort of tea bags and fire and things to make it which is really great but you'd need to do it on something that was just printed on one set of paper um, not within a book obviously you wouldn't want to risk popping that in the book now this is a gingham fabric this is really quite interesting I haven't tried that I thought it looked really tricky but I'm sure uh, if I traced it I could probably get to do it okay and here we have some sand I haven't tried out the sand but I think it looks really cool and a rainbow background a sparkling rainbow I have been wanting to have a go at this and I have seen a few people doing rainbows lately on the waterfall in magical jungle so that might be a place to have a go at it now marble effect I haven't tried these marbly bricks but they look quite fun but I have had a go at these rustic looking bricks and they were quite fun I do like doing a brick wall though you see I've got a tutorial on how to do uh, on how to do my own brick stone wall it's not actually red bricks it's stone and here's some uh, raindrops these are amazing I must have a go at these they just look so real I don't know how she does it but I haven't had a look I need to have a good look at that and here we have some ideas for different backgrounds sorry I can't turn the page Okay, and we have a, a glittery metallic feather background. I haven't had a go at that, that could be quite fun. And here we have a little picture where you can practice all the different techniques. And we have another one here. We can do the sunflowers and teddy bears. And another one here. And there's one with the honey. And these are a great idea. What she suggests is you use these shapes and colour them in. And if you make a mistake with your art, you can cut one of them out and then stick it on top so that you can cover up your error. What a good idea. And uh, it, rather than using a little sticker or something, you've actually got a piece of your own art and you can make it look more like it's supposed to be there. So that's that one. So I hope you enjoyed that and found that useful. And uh, you might want to uh, have a look at it and uh, and see if there are any ones that you want to have a go at yourself. Um, it is available to buy on Amazon. And there is a link um, in the description so you can grab it if you'd like it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hi everyone, I'm really excited because I received this book in the post today which is Colorist Special Effects 4 by Helen Elliston. Now I've got Helen's other four books, three books in this series and they're absolutely fantastic so I had to order this as soon as I knew it was available I had to order it and I thought I'd just share a little video with everyone to show them about it. Now the other three books are quite similar, I thought I'd just show you what they look like, there's number one and number two and number three and they cover all sorts of things like um, 
um, metallics and gemstones, hair, skin, lots of different foods and things like this and backgrounds and this book has similar things but obviously different and it looks great fun so I thought I'd just do a little flip through for you and tell you a bit about it. Now this page tells you a little bit about Helen and, and that there are free printable practice sheets on Facebook if you find her there and things like that. What it does say is quite important is that she uses Prismacolor Premier pencils. Now so on her um, the step-by-step -step guide it tells you which exact pencil numbers to use. However, I don't use these pencils, I don't have many of them and I use Polychromos pencils and I find it works perfectly fine with those. So you don't actually need this set of pencils. Now the first set is Edible Incredibles, it's a great title isn't it? And there are all these lovely things that you can learn how to colour. So her first one here is the candy corn. It looks really great. It's a great one for Halloween. It's great fun. You can see it's a little guide, how to do different parts of it. And then at the end, there's a sort of finished picture so you can see what it looks like. And you've got a piece here to try yourself. Now most of them are similar. So you have different steps and then some to practice. So here's our lovely pepper. And then she does this lemon. So you've got the, this is like the whole lemon. And then on this page, You've got a little slice of lemon and, uh, and some practice parts as well. This one looks so real, probably doesn't come out at all on the camera. It looks amazing. Then you've got peas, which are great fun. I love this one with the face on. And then you've got some green olives to do as well, which is sort of stuffed, which is great. And then you've got a pie. This is quite interesting. So it starts off like this but then look how real it looks at the end and even down to the sort of foil wrapper on the outside it's fantastic and then this one shows you how to do a filling so you've got this absolutely juicy looking cherry in the middle of the cherry bakewell and then this is an alternative filling so you've got some lovely jam and of course you could do different colors to, for different types of jam whatever you want to do and then here's the gingerbread person he's great for christmas maybe he looks great fun or she of course and then we've got our candy cane, another sort of Christmassy one, but it looks really shiny and lovely. It's a great one to do, and if you've got any Christmas colouring books, you'll have some candy canes, so it's a great one to find how to do. And the same with this candy swirl sweet. There's often a lot of these in Christmas colouring books if you've got sort of sweety pages. And this one, you get the sort of face on, and then you get the sort of sideways one, and the sort of on its side one. So you get different different angles of sweet that you can have a go at and try out. And of course you could replace some of these red colours for different colours if you wanted different colour sweets. And then we've got mushrooms. These are great fun. So you've got this one from the side. It looks almost real. It's amazing. And then you've got one from the bottom. And a sort of slice through a mushroom as well. They look absolutely amazing. And if you've got a colouring book with sort of mushrooms toastals in, then you could always use this to have a go and make something look really, really real. And now we've got back to sweets again. And uh, these are the sugar coated chocolate type sweets, different colours. And they look really shiny and yummy at the end. And this one is interesting. So it uses the sweets to a background. So uh, you can have a sort of span, you could pop, you could use it, do it like this on, um, have your picture in the middle or something like that. It looks like great fun to try. And this is a piece of toast, there's a couple of pages, it's quite a couple of steps, but look at that. It looks like I could just pick it up out of the page and eat it. It's absolutely amazing. And this one here, it literally looks a photograph of a piece of bread. And here it tells you how to do it. It's just, wow, amazing. And then you've got this balsamic and olive oil dip. So to go with your bread, so you've got all your bits and pieces so that you can do the balsamic and then do the oil and uh, and sort of do, do everything else, all the different steps. So you get to this sort of stage. You can see how it all comes together in this picture. This egg is actually from an earlier book. And it looks absolutely fab. And then here's your practice page. You can practice all the different ones. I haven't done any yet. I've only just had the book, but I can't wait to have a go. In fact, I don't tend to use the practice pages. I usually just go into one of my colouring books and have a good old go. It's much more fun. And here is uh, backgrounds. So we've got all sorts of different backgrounds. This is crumpled paper. It's absolutely amazing as a background for something. And then we've got a lace border. I think this looks great. Often in colouring books you get a round design and you get some page around it. You could use this to go around. I think it looks great. 
and the leather texture. This is really interesting. I'm not sure what I could use this for yet, but I think I might have a go at it. It looks just amazing. And this one, this is my favorite one, Rainbow Oil Slick. Look, all these lovely, shiny little bits of rainbow colored and different colors. It's just, wow, I think it's fab. And we have a weave pattern. This is quite different. So you've got different directions of weave. And then it's interesting because you look at it here, and, but once it's got these things in the foreground, they really stand out with this background behind. I think it looks great. And then you've got the spheres. Now you've got, there's um, this sort of convex and the concave spheres, which you can use. You could use a mix like she has here or just choose one particular one, do one colour, a mix of colours, whatever you want to do. It's fantastic. And I love Helen's sense of humour. Here she's got a photograph of herself. You probably can't see it. It says, my lockdown 2020 hair. Great, great fun. Now this one is the 3D cube. And it looks absolutely fab with all these different colours and things there. I think it's amazing. And then she does one with hexagons. And these look so 3D. They do look great. Okay, and there's a few more geometric ideas, different colours and shapes. And here you can practice some of these different effects. And now we move on to nature. Now this first one is really great. It's a dandelion. It actually teaches you how to do the different shapes and then to make it, you know, look like this so real. It's fantastic. Of course you need a coloured background behind the white. It looks really great. And then you've got your camellia. It's a very, very pretty flower. And I think once you learn this technique, you could use all sorts of different colours and have a go. Now the squirrel. Now he's great because so many people find fur so difficult and so you can go through all these different steps to work out exactly how to do the fur on the squirrel and he looks fantastic by the end. So that will be one to have a go at. Here you've got a pine cone. These are quite complex shapes so to get that effect is really fantastic. And a conker. He's great, he looks so shiny and new and lovely. And this bit on the top looks fantastic. Even got the string through the middle. And this is one in its shell, which looks all new and fresh and shiny. I love it. And an acorn, this is amazing. It just looks so real, as if someone just picked it up off the floor and popped it on the page. I think it looks great, I'm gonna have a go at this one. Might be the first one I do. Now, pine tree, now, there's lots of steps to this, different colors building up your dark colors and when you turn over, you see it's explained how to use this as a sort of background. So you've got your ones in the foreground and then some paler ones in the background. It looks absolutely amazing. And there's some sorts of, um, in, lots of instructions on how to set that all up so it looks really good. And here we have a few different ideas for doing feathers, which is great. So if you've got different birds to do, you can choose these different, whether you want something a bit more realistic or whether you want something that looks just a bit mystical and fun or bright. It's great. And another practice page. Let's have a go. And now we've got some, a section called Cool Stuff. It's quite random bits and pieces, which is great fun. So this is called a crackle ring. You see, it's just different colours. It looks all shiny and fun. And this, I think, could just be used around anything that you want to just make a border around. It's really great. And here you have a pot. Now, Normally, if you have to colour flower pots, you might end up doing them all the same or not too sure. Here you go. Here's one that looks a little bit different with these sort of lines across. I think this is really cool. And glazed red mushrooms. These look very shiny, sparkly. Either it's just rained or something like that. I think they look really great. And a rosette. Now, rosette's quite difficult to get all these different sort of textures between the different layers, but she's done it brilliantly. And look, there's only eight steps, and you've got it all done. It's amazing. And then ice cubes. Now, these, you know, to do something that's see through, but it just, you can see it, is just absolutely amazing. I think this looks fantastic. Now we have the spooky eyeball. This is a great fun picture, but look how great this sort of eyeball looks and all the bits around it and everything. And you could use this to do a normal eye, although there are eyes in her other books which might be better to follow. And there's a different type of eye here, still quite spooky. I just quite a few spooky things in here, which I think is great fun. And then we have a wax seal, something a little bit different. So you can see in the final picture, it looks all shiny and waxy. So, and you've got all the steps through on how to do that one. And then on this page, it shows you different ideas for centers for the seal that you can use. 
and on this page you can combine it so you've got your envelope and it's, she suggests you draw it on the back of an envelope to send to someone which sounds great fun and even do the string tells you what colours to use so you can put the string on it to make it look like um, you know it's tied up or, um, or draw some um, sort of flowers or things like that on there or even a ribbon great fun and there's a few more practice pages there and here we've got a stained glass window. Now this is a sort of arched window obviously with a, she's tried to make it look like a bumpy texture and it, by the time we get to this step here we can see how realistic it looks, it's lovely. And then on this page she does a different colour stained glass, the blue. And then here we have different textures for glass, so you have a sort of the more sort of squarish one, a swirly one and a bumpy one so you can try these different textures out and she's got a page here with an example so you can try it out and see how you get on and there's test pages for all the other bits and pieces too and then we move on to mystical and there's a lovely potion here look how gorgeous this is so you just a few layers of different colour and you end up with this absolutely amazing lightning potion it looks fabulous and this potion is uh, bubbly that's great fun and it even tells you how to do the bottle so you can get the sort of effect of that too and the same here this one is a glowing lava potion the bottle though is in one of the earlier books it's in, it says here it's in her book too and then we've got a the similar bottle again but we've got this sort of smoky potion it's just escaping through the cork it's great fun and a green potion and this one's sort of bubbling away it looks really fun really mystical and then the genie bottle, the colour is absolutely amazing, gorgeous. And then this blue orb, that's a really interesting idea. You could use it as a background for something or you could use it, you know, instead of a moon in a sky or something like that. It's great fun. And here we have some eye ideas, which are really interesting. So you build up the colour in the eye and then make it look all, all strange like this. How interesting. And this one, it builds up a little bit. You've got this... Um, feather clip which you explained how to do to make it look really sparkly and crystally and then it talks you through how to do the hair plait and then at the end you put it together in this picture so it looks very pretty all these lovely hair colours and the sparkly clip and then we have this star trail bird so he's um, got this sort of background and it's trying to make his his sort of feathers fan out and uh, goes across the page to end up with all these coloured details. It's probably very hard to see on the camera but it looks very impressive and here's our practice page again. I can have a little go. And there's another practice page. Now, I've noticed on this page there's a couple of lovely gemstones and a, and a sort of pearl. Now these are from earlier books of Helen's and they are amazing and I've had a go at the all of these and they're great fun to do. And what she's done this time is she's put in quite a fun page here is a word search. Oops. And she's put in an odd one out and a crossword. And then there are the um, solutions and we're going to cover them over so we can't cheat. So that's <laughs> a bit of fun there. And then we've got a test area so you can, there's a few spare pages so you can just test things out if you want to on there. So uh, so that's Helen's lovely book. So uh, in in the, the comments on this video, in the description, there will be a link so you can go onto Amazon to purchase this if you want to. It is an affiliate link so I... I do get some commission on the sale from that. So if you'd rather not do that, just go into Amazon yourself and search for Helen Elliston and you'll find her books. Thank you very much.